In this video, I'm gonna show you why you're using Keepa wrong and how you can use Keepa the correct way to ultimately make better buying decisions and more profit in your Amazon online arbitrage business. So we're here inside my screen and when most people are using Keepa, say we just select a size, right here, the only data they're actually looking at, if we get seller amp up here, as well the only data they actually look at is the chart right here right they'll look at like the 90 day data or go to like the all time and take a look at you know the last year however you're missing out on a lot of important data that can be crucial and incredibly helpful for making better buying decisions in terms of actually making good product buying decisions basically so if we go here to start off so you obviously do want to be looking at the keep chart right i'd recommend uh, clicking sub ranks right here so that you only uh, need to go ahead and see the two charts right here focus on the competition at the bottom and the price action on the top right here however you also want to be looking here where it says data and then now you can look at the product details right here and so this tab is going to give you a different view of the same data you see on the chart however it's going to be really nicely laid out so we can see the sales rank averages over time the buy box price averages over time the lowest price averages over time, FBA, FBM, everything like that, which is very, very helpful in terms of ultimately making better buying decisions, right? So you should mainly be focused on the 90 day data unless you're, you're purchasing big quantities of this inventory, right? So for right now, you know, a lot of you guys watching some beginners, you should only be buying, you know, a couple, 10 of different stuff. So I really like the idea of being able to see the average sales rank over time, as well as the average buy box price over time. Now, do you want to necessarily be, be estimating your buys off the 90 day average? Probably not, more so in terms of specifically the last month um, right here, just because price action can change. However, it doesn't hurt to have that average. Like for example, for this product right here, if we go here, data product details, the 90 day average is about 54 bucks and the current buy box about 50 bucks, right? And if we look at the last month, right here we can see it's right in the range of like 49.50 right there so in terms of actually when you're just a beginner focus more so just on the uh, mainly the month and 90 day data however seeing the data product details right here is incredibly helpful specifically to see the 90 day average sales rank the 30 day average and how that's changing because you can also see how demand can evolve on a product for example, right now, you know, Halloween's next month, so products that are Halloween friendly, like candy, costumes, stuff like that, a lot of that's dropping in sales rank. So if you looked at the 90 day average, you might say no to some stuff if you're looking at like the 30 day average and the current rank and the current ranks trend via the keeper chart, you wouldn't be able to decipher right there. So the main data I'm looking at on product details is definitely gonna be the averages right here, which can help you paint a good picture of how consistent this product's gonna be over time. Now. The next one is the offers tab right here. So just to start off, the offers tab, I am a fan of looking at the price at the price history right here. You can see what price different sellers are, specifically their price action over time. Now, I do not look at the, the sold 30 day and the sold stock cap. I disregard that, it's very inaccurate. The reason on that is because we can see in the stock history, like this seller obviously didn't go from 59 in stock on August 17th down to you know, 10 in stock on August 19th. What they did was they probably set max order quantities, which is a good way to avoid against black hat sellers right here. So completely, in my opinion, on the offers tab, disregard the sold and sold 30 day stock. I do like the price history for different sellers right here. It doesn't help you a ton, however, some people like to look it up. What I do like here from the offers tab is seeing how long sellers have been on the listing. If there's a bunch of sellers who have been on a listing for multiple months, it's a good way to validate that item as a potential replenishable product, right? Something like this, we can see there's been a bunch of sellers on it for 50 plus days, and as we look at the competition, we can see competition is, for the most part, trending down as of the past week or so. Right here, so I like the idea of looking at the data offers tab, specifically to find sellers to storefront stock off of with seller app, which is a topic for another video, but also to validate that sellers have been on something for a while. Another great pro tip with this is that if you're ever worried about IP complaints on a product or you see something on the keep it chart that might look like an IP complaint, it's a great idea to be able to navigate here over to the offers tab on Keepa and be able to see how long different sellers have been on that listing to validate whether or not it's something that's gonna make sense over time. The next piece of data I really like that a lot of people don't look at is the buy box statistics right here. So what the buy box statistics tab lets us do is it lets us see who's gotten the buy box, what percent they've won, 
at what price they've won and then at what time they've won. So, right, so the last one right over here. I don't really look at the average new offer count or the stock counts. However, I love the idea of seeing who's won it at what price. And then you can also filter here to the most expensive prices, see who's gotten um, super high price sales on this product because this is you know what percent of people are getting the buy box not necessarily what percentage of people are getting the sales but they're typically very correlated right here you do have to understand if you can see on the keep a chart and see a product that doesn't have a buy box right where there's no pink it can still be selling it's just gonna mess up the buy box statistics data because this just takes into account who's gotten the buy box not necessarily um, the lowest price in, in case that the buy box gets taken away which can still be fine it's actually a pro tip for product research. A lot of people will say no to stuff that doesn't have a buy box. Can completely be fine. You're gonna read the keep a chart the exact same way. I love the idea for Q4 sourcing of looking at the 365 day buy box, especially if it's a product that went to the moon last Q4, which we can see this item was 75 bucks in like, or, or like 60 bucks in or late November, and then it went all the way up to 106 in December for a little while. So what you can do is a good Q4 sourcing method is come in, go to 365 day buy box stats, filter to the most expensive, then storefront stock the people they were able to take advantage of it at the highest prices right there. So I love the idea of taking a look at the buy box statistics, not only for making decisions in terms of buying a product where you can realistically get the buy box, which you're mainly going to be looking at the 30 day data, but also looking at where you want to price, right? Because you don't necessarily have to be the lowest price. And on items like this, if we scroll down on Keepa, we can see there's people getting the buy box significantly above the lowest price right here. And we can see on the Keepa chart that the buy box is shooting up. And we can see that legitimately intraday, the buy box is going between 34 and 41 right here. So on a product like this, if we go to the data buy box stats, we can see that on a 30 day period, there's 25% of the buy box shares going at 40, right? And there's also some sellers that are getting a lot less than that at only like $30 right there. So it's incredibly important to play with your pricing and actually audit by looking at the keep a chart where the buy box is actually going so you can squeeze extra profit out of these products. Now, if you want a full tutorial of Keepa, I'm going to leave that link in the description um, right there. And also on the topic of pricing, it makes a lot of sense, especially with Q4 approaching, to start using an automated repricing software. So I'm going to leave a link to the repricer that I like to use as well as an extended free trial for it at the link in the description, which is BQ right there if you want a full walkthrough on it and able to take advantage of that um, additional savings that they're offering right there. So the big things you want to take away from this video is actually taking a look at the product details, the offers tab to validate replants, and then the buy box statistics right here to actually audit where the buy box is going in terms of pricing products right there. So it's really, really important that you use Keepa the right way and not just look at the charts, but also dig into some of this other data that's laid out in a, in a way that might be more digestible for you. You wanna combine all this and over time, you can get pretty good at reading the and building the muscle of reading Keepa charts right there. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. Check out the full Keepa tutorial for Be Good Tutorial. Let me know any questions as Q4 approach. I wanna help as many of you guys as possible hit your goals and I'll see you guys in the next one.